What's up everybody, Jay Leone here today um, with another video for you guys. Today we're going to do something a little different. I haven't done a video like this in a long time. Um, we're going to do a little comparison video. I'm going to compare two of my favorite sub ohm tanks right now on the market. I haven't used as many as a lot of other reviewers out there, but out of the ones that I have tried, I've narrowed it down to two that I pretty much use all the time. Um, and obviously this is going to change based on new tanks that come out and things will replace each other, but as of today, which is I believe the 8th of July 2015, these are two tanks I enjoy the most. I'm going to go head to head with them and show you guys some differences and whatnot, and then uh, maybe help some people decide if you're in the market for a sub ohm tank and you're looking between a few tanks, this will kind of maybe help some people out. So, um, yes, let's get to it. Today we're looking at the uh, uh, sub tank mini, and we're also going to take a look at the Aspire, not the Aspire, the Silo Beast. From beyond Bay. All right, so the uh, sub tank mini and the silo beast, uh, both of them. Let's start with the sub tank mini. Um, this one that we're looking at today is the one that came with the sub box starter kit. I don't have the other one. I got I sold it to a friend of mine, so I have this one here, which is the updated version. The old uh, sub tank mini tank and this sub tank mini tank that we're looking at are pretty similar. The only difference is really in the RBA section and the fact that it comes with vertical coils instead of horizontal coils. Now you could also you could still get the horizontal coils or the vertical coils, whatever one you prefer. Um, and I'll tell you what I prefer later for the tank. So there's two different versions of it. Neither They're both pretty much the same. Like I said, the RBA section is just a little bit different on the new updated version, but otherwise they're pretty identical. So now I get that out of the way, let's do a couple comparisons um, as far as price and stuff like that, and then we'll break them down. I'm not going to do unboxing and all that. We did all that, so if you want to see the full reviews for these, I'll post links um, in the comment section or I'll post them here right on the screen so you can just click on them if you want to check those out. Now, as far as prices, I pulled up the first vendors that come up um, as far as the Kanger sub tank mini and this is for the um, stainless steel one that's you know polished look on it um, the old one that came out uh, it's twenty nine ninety five and that's myvaporstore.com and it comes with it's the whole sub tank mini kit the tank the rebuildable section two coils drip tip um, uh, bu -bu -bu. yeah pretty much everything and as far as the silo beast I'm quoting beyond vapes website and the Beyond Vape website, it says it's $40, and I believe that's the same price it was when I reviewed it. I saw somebody post it on my uh, YouTube comments. There was another site that's selling them for 30 35 bucks or something like that. So do your shopping. Um, do what you got to do. Um, I'm just quoting Beyond Vape's website, like I said. It's 40 bucks. So it's a $10 difference between the two. Um, yeah. And then let's, let's get down close because there's not much I could say up here we'll compare them side by side and then uh, I'll give you my thoughts and opinions and what I think is the better tank or yeah the better tank because they're both good tanks in my eyes that's why I'm doing this video so let's go down to the table and let's take a look at them okay, closer. Okay so here's both the tanks up close together um, this this is the silo beast right here and this is the sub tank mini right here now again this is the one that comes with the sub box mini starter kit uh, I'm not going to go too in detail on them because, again, we've reviewed them. I just want to show you a couple differences between the two tanks. Let me take the rebuildable section out. Obviously, one of the big differences is you're not going to get a rebuildable section with the Silo Beast tank. There are two coils here. The difference, obviously, is the Kanger Sub Tank Mini Coil is a square coil. Um, this one here is a 0.5 ohm. And this one here is also a 0.5 ohm, so they should be very similar in performance. And these these are the new vertical coils, which um, are in the sub tank coil right here. Let's see that the airflow comes from down here in the pin, and then you got two big juice flow holes right there. And they're both using Japanese organic cotton, and again, both about the same ohm resistance, 0.5. Let's take a quick look at the Aspire Atlantis coil right here. Uh, size comparison between the two, yeah, the Atlantis coil is definitely bigger than the um, sub tank mini coil. 
See, this one's got four airflow holes going around. It's got threading on top and some knurling here to make it easy to screw in. You don't need the knurling on this one because it is square, so it's really easy to grip. Um, big Hooven airflow hole down here at the bottom. And by the way, these are the Aspire Atlantis V2 coils. So they are using Japanese organic cotton in these also. And you can see through the top here, see a massive coil with a mesh screen on top and then, you know, organic cotton all around there. So it is a big coil, a lot bigger of a coil, and a lot more airflow comes through this coil also. And then this guy here looking through the top, you can see it's not nearly as big of a coil, not nearly as big of a uh, wicking area around it. So you can see that. Those are the differences with the coils. As far as the airflow goes on the tanks, this is the Atlantis base right here. And you can see the airflow holes here. They're just massive, massive airflow holes. So you're going to get a nice, nice airy draw on this beast tank right here. As far as the sub tank mini, one airflow hole here. And there's another one on the other side. And it's the same thing with the beast. There's two holes. And then you can turn it. And you hear it click. And then you got this little hole here. And then you got a little bit bigger of a hole here. Definitely getting more airflow on the silo beast tank than the sub tank mini tank. Now it's going to be based on per personal preference whether you like the looser draw or the tighter draw. Now on the sub tank mini tank, the nice thing about it, at least on this vi revision of it, um, you, I don't remember if the other one had these small tiny airflow holes. I don't think it did. I don't think it had a hole that small. You could actually do mouth to lung inhales on this tank quite easily. And you can't, uh, you can do it on the beast tank, but it's not done as easily. And when you do tighten down the airflow hole that tight, it tends to whistle a lot because you can just close off this hole like this and you get a nice mouth to lung inhale, and it will whistle like the Dickens. And I'll show you up top what it does. Uh, as far as aesthetics go, I mean, like I said, this is the updated version that's red with the. The red O-rings with the black finish on it, and the other one that they sell is stainless steel uh, with no coating on it, so it's a little more sleek looking. This is, you know, a colored look to it. So yeah, the Silo Beast, it's, I think it's a more elegant looking sub-ohm tank, to be honest with you. It's got nice engraving here, it says Beast and Silo down here, big airflow holes. You could also get it in short mode if you're not a fan of the length of this. It holds four and a half mils of juice standard and then you can bring it down to I believe two and a half or three mils with a shorty tank and I mean I just think it's a more elegant looking tank compared to the sub tank but you can see it's definitely taller but if you did get the short section for it which is another 10 bucks I believe let's look at the drip tips really quick side by side there you go as far as bore size goes there you go the beast has a bigger bore on their air on their drip tip here and this is like a plastic type drip tip this is obviously a stainless steel drip tip so this one's got double o-ring down here and the sub tank one's only got a single drip tip uh single o-ring on it those are the main differences and they both have non-adjustable 510 connections they're both fixed connections in there and they're both also 22 millimeters so there's a lot of similarities a couple things that set it apart from each other though let's go up top and i'll tell you a lot more about these two little beasts and uh, what I like about both and what I don't like about both. So that was a quick side by side and turn my lighting down, it was a little too bright. Quick side by side between the silo beasts and the sub tank mini tanks. Uh, one thing I quickly forgot to mention in the up close segment was the fact that the silo beast is a top fill device, which um, is a huge difference between the two on the sub tank mini. You have to actually take the base off, fill it upside down, and pour your liquid down the side. Which isn't bad, like most sub tanks, that's how it is. And with the Silo Beast, you just unscrew the top section here and you shoot your li liquid down, and no problem. Also, it's obviously easier on the sub on the Silo Beast because you don't have to turn it upside down, just easier, in my opinion. So, I slapped new 0.5 ohm coil in here, it is the Atlantis V2 coil I just slapped in there. I slapped in a new 0 .5, co 0 0.5 ohm coil in the Silo Beast tank. Oh, on a side note, I am using 7030 juices in both tanks, 
and that's usually what I use in them, and they always work perfectly fine for me. Anytime I go a little higher than 70% in the sub tank mini, I get a little bit of um, trouble wicking. So I try to stay no higher than 70% VG in these in this tank in particular. I think the Beast does a better job because it has more um, juice flow slots and it has four compared to two in this guy. So let's have a vape off this one now. It doesn't quite produce as much vapor, in my opinion, on the sub tank mini than I get here on the silo beast tank. Again, that has to do with airflow holes. I mean, the airflow on this is just worlds, worlds looser than it is on that one. Clouds for days on this one. They're both, you know, they're both cloud machines for, per se, but this one in my opinion is more meant for flavor they both put out vapor though there's no doubt about it this one is has the edge on on flavor if you ask me so if you're looking for more if you're more of a flavor chasing kind of person i think the subtech mini has the silo beast beat hands down in the flavor department I actually think the flavor is even a little bit better with the horizontal coils instead of the vertical coils I'm using now, which I saw online you can still get the horizontal coils, so if you're a fan of the horizontal ones, you can order some of those. But yeah, I think the flavor is still better even with the vertical coil compared to the um, Atlantis, Atlantis, Atlantis coils in the Beast Tank. Yeah, much better. Let me bump up the wattage here. Right, now, I, it's reading 0.5 ohm. No, it's reading 0.6 ohms. I'm sorry on on this device here, the sub box or was this the K box mini? And I got it up to 27 watts, which is four volts. Yeah, they're both good on flavor, but just the sub tank mini beats it on flavor. Again, they're both good. They're both good at clouds. I give the cloud advantage to the beast tank, give the flavor advantage to the sub tank mini. So really, it comes to what are you looking for more? Slightly, uh, not slightly, a lot, lot tighter of a draw on this guy, a lot looser of a draw on this guy. With, uh, more flavor on this guy, more vapor on this guy. So yeah, they both hold four and a half mils of juice. Except the beast, you have the option of buying the separate short tank for it. Now, if you said, "Here's forty bucks, go buy yourself a sub tank," or yeah, go buy yourself a sub tank that's really good. In my opinion, I would go with the sub tank mini, and the reason being because I do get a rebuildable head section here which I can rebuild my own coils and I have enjoyed this little guy a lot because I slapped in some nickel wire and I put it on one of my temp mods and I just go to town on it. It's great. I don't have to worry about dry hits or anything. Um, I, if I don't want to build coils I can just buy a replaceable head here and put those guys in and they vape fantastically. They're not power hungry so you don't need a lot of power to get good performance out of them. Between 27 and 30 watts it's a dream. But the Silo Beast they're the same resistance coils. I have it at 37 watts and it's reading 0.6 ohms, so I'm getting 4.7 volts out of the coil. So I don't need as much I don't need as much power on the sub tank mini that I do on the beast. So that's another thing. If you have a 30 watt device, you're better off with the sub tank mini also because you're not you know you're not going to need more really many more than 30 watts to power it up and make it perform perfectly. And for me, the airflow where it's at right now, it's a little bit restrictive. It's not super loose. I like that. And I like the fact that you can get a 1.2 ohm coil that you can purchase from them. And you can tighten down the airflow and do mouth and lung inhales. If you do choose to do that, you have that option. I just think it's a more versatile tank for the price. It's 30 bucks. You get a rebuildable section. You get a couple coils. 
You could do mouth to lungs. Uh, you could do straight up lung inhales. The flavor is really nice. Uh, it, it looks nice. Um, I, I give the Beast the uh, edge in the look department. I think it's a more classy looking sub tank out there. One of the more classy ones out there. I just think for the money, 30 bucks, and what you get out of it, out, it's just a better solid performing tank. That's all. Um, but if you have 40 bucks and you don't like rebuilding coils, and you do want huge airflow, the Silo Beast would be the winner. They're both tanks, hands down. They're both winners. But I'm just saying, if you had to choose just one tank, that's the tank that I would choose. That's my little side-by-side -side comparison on the guys. I'll post links to both tanks in the description below, so you can check them out for yourself. Uh, stay tuned, because next week, we, I think we're going to be doing the uh, gang mod from uh, Fumi Vapor, finally. I think I'm going to be getting that in this week, and we're going to take a look at that one. That's going to be interesting. It's a uh, kind of like a brass knuckle type device. It's very cool looking. Some juice and stuff they're sending along. We'll take a look at that also. And we have a couple other things coming up too, so stay tuned for all that. If you want to uh, continue to watch my channel and all the videos that I post, click here down in the description link. And uh, until next time, guys, I will grab the sub tank mini and <laughs> live well and vape on.